فتی الله فتی رسول و لدن بی مینکو ای خدا من عبد کلاجیس و دعیف و مسکین و ظالم و جهن برشد گریس و الله سبه جل در ویار ستیل ان اگزیستنس الحمدلله شد حج شهد we have the Fajr awrad uh, at the beginning iqamadu uh, salai ta'ahu zakat and then we give the the pillars of faith and the testimony the pillars of Islam and the testimonies of faith can you recite those here uh, from iqamadu salai all the way down to arsalnahu ta'ala rahmatan lil alameen أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصوم رمضان وحج البيت حق آمنت بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله وبالقدر خيره وشره من الله تعالى أودعنا هاتين الكلمتين الشهادتين وهي لنا وديعة يوم القيامة يا من أرسله الله تعالى رحمة للعالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم that for our fajr, every fajr, the awrad of the fajr, we, we recite the pillars of Islam and testify to the principles of faith. And this is what brings us towards maqam al ihsan and the maqam of perfection that we testimony of faith and we bear witness and that we perform the prayers, our salah, we give our zakah and that we accept to fast the Ramadan and to make the pilgrimage to the house of Allah And then in our faith and the levels of faith is that we declare my belief in Allah belief in His angels. This is where the ocean of iman and faith and malakut and the world of light people are not reaching. So we testify to it but how many people are actually believing in the angels, believing in all the holy books, believing in His messengers on the day of judgment and then the most important of this talk tonight is in destiny. Both it's good and it's bad, everything been written by Allah and may the truth of what I say be accepted, we're repeating all the time to Allah This principles of faith and destiny in its 
good and bad, whatever has been written for us has an immense importance. That Allah bi rabbikum wa qalu bala, then we would turn to Surat Al-Araf 7, 7th Surah verse 172. So this is about the testimony of faith and Surah Al-7, 172, InshaAllah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa idh akhadha rabbuka min bani InshaAllah that Allah inspire within our hearts a deeper understanding. In this world of light Allah Subhi Rabbikum Muqalu Bala that in the world of light when Allah created the souls and began to destine and write their destiny. And the immensity, it wasn't just we said, yes I will accept Islam, the immensity of what was written that you would go to earth, we said, bala, you would be created in such and such form, we said, bala, you would be sick, we said, yes, you would be deformed, you said, yes, you would have money, you said, yes, you would have no money, yes, you would be orphaned, yes, you would be crippled as a child. Yes, whatever Allah had asked of the servants that this will be your destiny and we said, bala. The immensity of that and the reality that inshaAllah try to bring out tonight its understanding was not just a simple one question Allah asked and we said, yes and that sounds very easy. But this is for all the people who ask themselves, well if there is a God why are so much difficulty been written for people? Why are children suffering? Why is this person ill? Why has that one been harmed? What are all these things in Allah's infinite oceans of rahmah and mercy? The extent of what Allah was going to write and the extent in which we were so eager to please Allah and our affirmation of saying yes and as soon as we said yes witnessed by the angels and witnessed by the souls that are familiar with each other. And Allah clarifies in Surat Al-Araf, we told you everything that we were going to write for you. We asked you from your destiny these are the things that would happen to you, everything, everything. Don't think anything in this life of ours is random, why is this happening to me, why is this, why is this? Allah said, you signed and you said yes to it. And Allah said, why? I made you to testify in the world of malakut and in the world of souls and why are there witnesses to the fact that you did testify? So that on the day of promises and the day of resurrection 
you don't come lying to Allah that you don't come saying, I didn't know. I didn't know I was supposed to give that, I was supposed to do that, I was supposed to follow them, I was supposed to believe in this, I was supposed to do this, I was supposed to do that. Says ignorance in dunya, ignorance is not an excuse from the law. Say, I went 120 miles an hour, I didn't know it was 75 here. You can't claim ignorance in any part of any law on this earth. Say, I didn't know by means of that I just went and did it. Allah is then clarifying for His heavens, you're not going to be able to come up here and claim ignorance. And you can't come up and tell Allah's presence and say, I didn't know. Because then the effect of that is that dunya made you to be heedless, that you're now in an, under a different difficulty by Allah because you're admitting now that you came to dunya, you became heedless in dunya, you forgot what you had promised to Allah and that's why then the turuqs come to bring the reality of this perfection, the tafsir of this understanding of Ayatul Kareem and our testimony of faith and the understanding of our testimonies and principles of iman. The Ya Rabbi whatever you asked of me I said, yes. And that's why Prophet said that, you can do many sins and then he listed, you can do this and ask for forgiveness, you can do this and ask for forgiveness but you cannot lie. A Muslim and mu'min does not lie but people are lying every day. So it wasn't meant that you can't lie to dunya because dunya people lying every day. But the haqqaiq and the reality of what Prophet is that you cannot lie to Allah That a Muslim and a mu'min will not be able to be raised in the Divinely Presence and lie and say that, I did not know. I did not know Ya Rabbi that you wanted all these things. Ignorance of the fact what you promised is no excuse and will not take you out of the difficulty of what was promised. So means now we brought in even the hadith of Prophet describing about you cannot lie because we know more, many more men that lying all the time. But this not the lie that is, is, is of a concern, you make your tawbah and is, 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 istighfar. But you cannot lie that you did not promise Allah what you promised. So how to reach your ahad, we call in Surah Al Tawbah your ahad. So how they reach their ahad and how they completed their covenant with Allah means their bayah became real, Allah accepted their bayah, that they took the hand and they completed their covenant. And Allah bought from them their dunya and gave to them akhirah in exchange. That's then the reality of the tariqah is coming to teach that what was my promise to Allah and as the shaykh's duty to take the servant towards the reality of their promise, then we begin to understand why the manners. When people are, are texting, emailing, not texting, emailing, I have this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. This talk tonight is to remember whatever problem is coming you accepted it. You told Allah yes, if you're sick you said yes, if you're short on something you said yes, if a difficulty is happening in, in your life you said yes. Everything was written whether it's good or it's bad, it's been written. So then the ocean of taslim and the ocean of submission, the oceans of good characteristic that, Ya Rabbi whatever you have written for me you have written. Have mercy upon my soul and forgive me Ya Rabbi. Give me good character to traverse every type of testing. Give me strength to endure what has been written for me, what I'm not able to carry, what I'm not understanding on how to carry. Ya Rabbi grant me faith, grant me himma, grant me a zeal, grant me your energies. Instead of fighting our faith and fighting our destiny, whatever your faith is, Imam Ali described, walk into it. Means we accept whatever Allah has written, we're trying our best to fulfill what Allah has asked for us on the Day of Promises. And whatever we promised must have been heavy. No promise is a small promise in Allah's presence. 
Means that's why the, the heavens and earth and looked to it and said, we would never carry that responsibility. But insan said, I'll do it. And the extent of it, the weight of it is something that can't be imagined. And Allah's immense mercy are the turuqs, the turuq. Because how anyone's going to fulfill the will of Allah because they're heedless. So then you can see the immensity of the mercy of Allah is that if you're heedless, He's not, go follow Him, go follow them. The turuqs, their hearts are open. We need someone with an understanding greater than ours, a connection stronger than ours, an understanding that the heart is open, the coordinates are open and they begin to give their isharat and their guidance through their whole chain of madad that coming to them and all the shaykhs that are supporting them all the way to the great sahabi Khulafai Rashideen and Mahdi'een wa ba'dahum wuzaraya kamileen and then the, the, the perfected wazirs all connected to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad immense chain that coming from the heart of Prophet hold tight when Allah hold tight to that chain. If you ever f find that chain from amongst these shaykhs coming down to you, hold tight to it and don't separate from it. Because as soon as you hold tight to that, that is the guidance that coming now, coming down and telling you, no you promised Allah keep good patience. Why to be angered by Allah? I don't know why He's writing this for me, I'm angry, I go drink and I leave the path. Oh, that going to make it immensely worse, immensely worse. That this promise that we made to Allah we have to fulfill the promise. There's no running from the promise. And then what was the ayat al kareem written in the awlad. Which surah we're looking at? That was for istiqam fi tariqat. The immensity of 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 committing and understanding our lives, so that every difficulty has an understanding for us. To pray for patience, for understanding, and for strength. That Allah give us the strength in which to approach this destiny of what we promised to Allah Then as we follow their advice on good character and patience, do our salawat, do all the zikrs, attend the majlis of zikrs, do all the fard, no doubt that the fard all have to be done. We don't have to repeat that, that's a, a given that you have to do what's mandatory from Islam. But to attend the zikr it's not obligatory but this is a sign of someone who loves, they listen to the zikr, they attend the zikr, they want to be from the people of tafakkur so they make zikr often, they make zikr standing, sitting, lying in all states of their being they're in continuous remembrance of Allah And that's to reach towards these realities, the tariqahs is bringing us towards our ahad and our covenant with Allah that every time something happens and I'm getting upset, they tell you be patient, do your meditation, why? Because they want you to understand that you asked, you, you accepted what this was going to be. You accepted a difficulty in life, so why are you complaining about it? Complaining won't change it, but to accept it and understand that, Ya Rabbi grant me a support, whatever heaviness I accepted out of my, my whatever reason I did and I, and I, and I asked for that Ya Rabbi, grant me a strength to endure it, grant me an ability to pass it. It's much better than trying to be rebellious and to run from that reality. So it means the immensity of, of the destiny and how to reach to our destiny, how to be patient with what's been written upon us. And then we don't need you know hundreds of emails to come in, is this my destiny, is this my destiny, is this my… Just think to yourself, could anything come to you that was not your destiny? If anyone can email me that, that yes, then, then you're going to get a golden prize. That's when Shaykh Abdul Qadir told his students, go and slaughter this and slaughter it somewhere where Allah is not seeing you. 
So any student that thinks that something can come to them without Allah knowing then that's uh, very incorrect. So everything in our life and every incident and every spark and every character, everything that ignites us, every, every single action was written. When Allah said, I'm going to write for this and you're going to not get angry and we said, yes. And the difficulty came and we got angry and you lost, you failed it. That you're going to write when these shaykhs come, you're going to follow the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Do you think that this was our cleverness? We all decided one day that we're going to grow beards and we're going to do this. Or Allah had written this destiny for us and that Allah's rahmah and mercy presented a door and Allah's isharat and push into the heart is go through it. And as a means of that reality that was written, we went and stepped through that reality to be dressed by its reality. So means then this path that we're moving on the 70, on the 8th month times 9 which is the reality of 72. So everything is a mirror, so all our holy days are 27, Thabi wal Ishreen by the secret of the 2 and the 7. It's in Grand Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani's du'a, du'a mandur, Ya Rabbi by the reality of the two and the seven, by the reality of this twenty-seven that reflects the heavenly gates of seventy-two and is the holy month of Shaban. And the seventy-two and the seventy-second surah is Surat al-Jinn. Stressing now the importance of the malakut, the unseen, the reality of, of the lights and energies and powers that are not understood by the physicality, they are not understood by the, the brain although the, the alien TV everything is about their brain trying to understand it. This is the reality of the heart and reality of the heavens. Now. This is the a loaded night of surahs inshaAllah. Surat al-Jinn, let's do 16 and 17 Haji Shahid. So Surat al-Jinn now and the istiqamu fi tariqat that in this month of 72. And in the month of ascending into the heart, into the realities of Sayyidina Muhammad So Rajab was the Divinely heart that we're being dressed by the realities of Allah's ancient heart and that ancient heart opens the reality of the prophetic heart and this is the realities and the dresses of the malakut and the lights and the world of lights. Allah then enjoins unto us from Surat Al-Jinn verse 16 and 17 inshaAllah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa لنفتنهم فيه ومن يعرض عن ذكر ربه يسلقه عذابا صعدا صدق الله العلي العظيم Sadaq Allah nadeem, Balaq the Rasul Kareem, Istiqamu fi tariqat.
and this sort of changes it. So I mean the immensity of the path and then Allah will give a guidance in Surat al-Jinn that hold firm to your path and their tasis are very interesting that they want to hide the word tariqah. When they say tariqah is not in Qur'an, we described last year, no tariqah is in Qur'an and it's right at the place in which Allah is a giving a warning, wallahi, if they keep their path, if they keep their tariqah, keep their, their way to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad certainly Allah would have bestowed upon them rain in abundance. Remember from Mayan Munhamiran because this the same journey is going into that reality that Allah for us rain is the, is the fountain of life, water, my Allah said my throne is upon the water. Any reference to water Allah is giving to us, I will illuminate your heart, rejuvenate your heart, my throne is upon this reality of my and I'm going to whoosh you and cleanse you and bless you from all of that. Istaqamu fi tariqah that keep firm onto your tariq, keep firm onto your tariq. Later on you can read what type of crazy tafsirs they give because they don't want this word of tariq and they want to make it as if it's a reference to something else. No, each ayatul Qur'an al-Kareem has immense oceans of reality, just that ayah. It's not in reference to any other ayah, it doesn't have to follow a sequence of ayahs. It's not in reference to anyone other than what Allah used of words. The rest are people's tafsirs. People make a translation and then they write the translation that this is in reference to, no, istiqamu fi tariqatit. Keep firm on your tariqah and then Allah will open the fountains of abundance. The next verse, and that we're going to try you and test you by means of it. Don't turn away from the remembrance of Allah it's only the tariqah people would understand. Don't turn away from dhikrullah, it's not, this is not meaning salah, this is not meaning zakah but Allah is giving a warning, stand firm on your tariqah. Because it's not something that you enjoy, accept, you reach towards realities and then you walk away from the reality. Because Allah said, once you start to walk away from that reality, He's giving a warning that you're going to then what? Walk away from the remembrance of Allah shaitan will cause this person to undergo severe penalty. So means then the the immensity of what Allah has given to us and how that relates to everything. That, that we're trying to reach our ahad and our covenant. Allah gives a mercy and a rahmah to us that follow these turuqs. They are the, the guides of Allah the guides of Sayyidina Muhammad They guide you to your ahad and your covenant with Allah then Allah on the 72nd surah, the power of the eighth month, the month of Shaban, Allah and then hones in on the 16th surah to say, Istiqamu fi tariqatit. That they move your knock you left, they knock you right, your feet go right back onto the tariqah. Why? Because the destiny is going to be good or bad. And many difficulties come into your life, many will be knocked off their path because of the difficulties, many will be increasing in faith because of them. Those whom held tight with the rope, those who made their tafakkur that their connection wasn't a, a flower on a rock. You know some people come, oh I love, love, love you guys and in two, two minutes you know the bag of rice is two dollars more, oh my god I hate you people, <laughs> you didn't reply in time. It can be whatever reason, it can be you didn't start the zikr on time, I'm very upset I was hungry. Their, their love 
it goes to hate in a second like a wind is gone. And Allah is warning not with these people that if you're trying to reach your destiny of Allah that's why the tariqah is not related to, oh I have to follow Nashbandi, no, no. You're fulfilling your covenant with your ahad with Allah Naqshbandiya is a means in which to take you to your covenant. So for you to walk away from tariqah, Allah is then warning that if you do that most likely shaitan is playing with you and you will have walked away from dhikrullah, from everything that was bringing beatific lights and beatific realities and beautifying the heart. So means the tariq was just a a means to take you to your covenant with Allah It's not the end, the tariqah is not the destiny. People want to make a confusion for people, no tariqah is just a means, it's like a supersonic shadow taking you to your destiny for Allah And Allah then warns in, in this surah, you can't walk away from this because it's taking you towards me and your destiny of what you promised me. So that I don't raise you on the day of judgment and that you want to lie to me and say, I didn't know. No, they were guiding you to know. How you can say, I didn't know? They were teaching you how to know. They were teaching you to be patient with all your testing. They were teaching you not to yell, not to scream, not to open your mouth. People now even their… if they don't use their bad mouth, they're using bad fingers. Even that they tell you, don't. You got nothing good to say, don't say it at all and push yourself to say good things and to, to promote and comment on good things, all of that was to reach the ahad of Allah Nashbandiya was just a means, Nashbandiya is not the end, Nashbandiya is not the goal. Nashbandiya, Shadiliya, Rifaiya, all the different tariqahs, Muhammadiyya, all of them are to reach Allah ahad and covenant of what we promised from the day of promise. And that Allah said, if you stand firm, I'm going to shower you with this water, I'm going to shower you with this blessing. We pray that Allah give us more and more strength, more and more Ameen. understanding Ameen. from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad all of these realities and these blessings to hold firm to our tariqah and the tariqah is a, a way of love and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Allah keep us, our families, our children, our community all immensely washed in dhikrullah and the majlis of Salli ala Nabi all the way to the day of day. They host and Allah allows us to die in our path. For you brought us into this world, take us out with the Allah, not to leave the way of Sayyidina Muhammad Amen. Allah not Muhammad and Mustafa.